you're ready for this. Gonna be fun. You will not stand in my way. Frostborn. Hunger. This pleases me. I do not fear you, mortal. Your soul shall be mine. Don't make me laugh. Will you taboo? Oh, I do. Hell, I'll shred and be there. Let the battle begin. <laughs> So hello and welcome to the 69th episode of the Nexus Trolls. Podcast this is for you, Bacon! <laughs> a podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. Yes, that was a 69 joke. Part of the Trolls.gg Entertainment Network. I'm your host, Daz, and I'm joined today, as always, by Mystic. Mystic, how's it going, bud? Uh, it's going pretty good. You getting your last licks in with Medivh and Sonya before the changes come live? Uh, yeah, I've tested out the changes on the PTR, and they are looking pretty good. I was trying to play some Medivh games on live server before <laughs> we get the new Medivh come in, because I've, I love playing Medivh, and I actually like playing the new one too, but I guess we'll get to that a little bit later in the show. But I also want to say hi to our very special guest today, the host of the <laughs> Troll and HGC podcast, Liquid. <laughs> it's not been that long, dude. It's not been that long. Hold on. Wait a minute. It's, not, it's definitely not been that long. <laughs> Liquid, I was on the show two weeks ago. Welcome to the show. He's an oftentimes <laughs> appears here. Uh, when when schedules permit, so it's good to have him back on the show. Liquid, good to see you again, bud. Thank you. It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know it's been a while. I know it's been a while. I I, I just I know you you have uh, you know work scheduling issues and stuff. And real life always trumps video game life is something I always say. So it's not a problem at all. Hopefully we'll be getting you here a bit more consistently over the next few weeks because everyone loves loves hearing from you and uh when when you're not here the esports content tapers off a little bit a little <laughs> so, bit so we definitely need you for that if nothing else um so we got a good show today we we're gonna talk about the ptr patch that dropped <laughs> don't we have a good show every day we do well, wait, well you, you know week. what you know i'm mean? like Ooh, this one's kind of a bad one you might not want <laughs> to tune in as a matter of fact you know just skip to the next episode because this one's not worth listening to you're not gonna say that come on liquid you gotta you gotta say like yeah we well, got a I great know, show I for like, you we- we have a good episode today. It's more like we have a good episode every day or every time we do this show, and this one's no different. Okay, as per always, we got a great episode for you today. Yes! We've got a PTR patch that dropped yesterday, a couple days ago. So with Sonia, Medivh, and Ana changes, a really big rework to Medivh and Sonia specifically. Ana got some minor tweaks as well. And we're going to have a little Liquid's Esports Corner because Liquid's here this week. Uh, no Mystic Shakedown this week, but it will be returning in the future. But before we start the show, we always like to thank our patrons over at patreon.com slash trolls gg. Check it out because we got new stretch goals, a whole bunch of stuff. We're actually getting close to one of our first stretch goals as well. Um, and I guess we should thank our chieftain, Super Dave. I got to get used to saying that. Uh, Super Dave has been a patron for a while, and he just recently bumped his patronage up to the level of chieftain. So he is our chieftain of the show. I got to, I need to, I need to apologize too i forgot to bring up dave last night on troll and hcc so a double thank you Ooh. chieftain super dave because chief- i forgot you last night and i'm chieftain's sorry. gonna roast you over the fire for that one <laughs> probably is and uh we always like to thank our troll of the week as well our troll of the week this week very aptly is zexorus zexorus was the self-proclaimed villain of creators of the storm he's also a caster for nexus commentaries used to be part of the heroes power hour but that unfortunately just stopped actually i think about three weeks ago uh from broadcasting weekly shows but he does have a new show that's around the corner so stay tuned for that i'm sure you can follow zexerus that's at z-e-x-e-r-o-u-s on twitter for more information about all that kind of stuff that he's up to for those of you that are not canadian when Daz says Z, he actually just means the letter Z. So don't try and type that in. Is there a twenty seventh letter in the alphabet? Because I don't know Z. Stuff I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> Canadians and Z. It's not. I got, I got grief over that last night too. It's not just trolling. Canadians. It's actually most of the English speaking world that does the, uh, the right. proper well, way. Just saying. That may be true. That may be true, and it may be HGC, but I call it HGC. So. <laughs> Except your your guy's bumper even says HGC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause, cause we, uh, cause we clipped the Western Clash uh, from last year, and that's how he said it last year. So you're you're yeah. in, you're in yep. the closet, at proper English speaker, liquid. <laughs> no man, no. You have, you've had me on the show before. You know that's not a true statement. Come on. <laughs> Words can be hard sometimes. 
Um, so why don't we just get right into it, guys? Let's jump into the news. Someday, this will make a great story. So last weekend was a very stressful one for, I guess, all three oh. of us. Myself and Liquid particularly because we were doing production and logistics for Creators of the Storm, an amazing tournament that we hosted over in Trolls.gg on our Twitch channel. Um, and Mystic actually partook in it. And Mystic actually won the event along with Bags, Guaz, Alebeard, and Roz, Razai, who's been on the show in the past and is a writer for Trolls.gg. Mystic, how's it feel to be a champion? Uh, it feels really good. Here, let me let me grab my. <laughs> that I'm just I need to throw this out there while you grab what you're grabbing. Oh, you got your shirt already. Nice. No, 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 no. I, I'm gonna use this as like my trophy. So you know what those Koreans do usually. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Well, I have, I have two questions. Uh, for I I gotta go to you first, Daz. How do you like the shirt? I like it a lot. Think... It smells kind of funny. Kind of like vinegar, but I think that's just part of the printing process. I just right, need to wash right, it, right. and I haven't washed it. I just got it today, so I was like, I gotta wear it for the show. Um, but it's it's amazing. I like it, and it's even got the creators logo in the back too. I didn't know about that. So yeah, yeah, the little one, yeah, yeah. The little tiny guy. But I like it a lot. And I mean, if you're looking for creators of the storm swag, we do have a lot on our website. You can just head over to uh, trolls.gg/cots. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's a whole bunch of merchandise for all the different teams and just creators of the storm in general. And socks too. I've got socks in the way. They didn't, they're they're not here yet, but I'm getting socks aren't here yet. Yeah. Um, they're, they're shipping. Right. I got the notification. That's awesome. That's awesome. For next show. Um, I, I got I got my youngest the hoodie version of that shirt, and then I got the socks. So, um, Mystic, when uh -huh. you guys were in the hyper carry match. Oh yeah, I, I knew this question was coming. I well no, so like I'm I'm producing everything right, so I'm like sitting okay. there. I'm watching the game, and I have my mic muted so no one can hear me at all, right? Like, so that I'm not distracting the casters. And you bust out Keltazad, and I'm like, that's it. We just fucking won. Like, game's over. What? What? Yes, that was your reaction? <laughs> yes. I'm like, dude, I cannot believe they let us have this. This is insane. Mystic just won the game. And then the game started, and it was a little... It wasn't as good as I was expecting right away, but Keltazad asked to come online. And then you guys started, like destroying in team fights i'm like yep that's what i was expecting so, yeah, so well, yes it so. wasn't my exactly the best performance on keltazad especially at the beginning because zexorus you know was uh, gunning me down but yeah yep <laughs> a little well, so a little context so first quickly this is in the finals against uh zexorus's team and creators of the storm and the match was hyper carry which means that both teams could only draft one assassin and specialists weren't allowed or varian so uh mystic ended up being on kt in that case when, so my question is were you guys talking about various assassins or were you just like we're doing keltazad this is perfect um so the team was thinking more of a CC oriented comp, as Bag said in his interview. So when they did all that draft, you know, I was kind of keeping the assassin hidden away a little bit. So, but I did voice that, hey, we can't do Kel'Thuzad here, and that would fit into the whole CC comp. Okay. And then looking at their entire team, I'm just like, all right, who who can actually damage them that heavily? Like they have two healers, they have all this, all these tanks, and I'm like, huh. Well, Vala is like the one or one of the ones that could damage them a lot. But, you know, obviously they have Vala. And I was thinking yeah, another person, maybe uh, Malthale with. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. With all that AOE, like percentage health damage. But you know, he's he's melee and he's not exactly like high impact, right? He like right. just hits your entire team just very slowly. So I'm like, hmm, who does actually like a lot of damage, can burst, can CC, and uh is pretty high impact oh keltazad you know it's like he just fits the bill perfectly and we cool. just ended up going with that so i i was excited when i saw that last pick because i was trying to figure out who you were gonna play and yeah it did not disappoint definitely check that you should check all the games out but definitely check that game out that was uh that was a lot of fun no no, no, no. don't watch that game i was doing pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> zex versus hooks are pretty on point but you know what yes. what is important is the late game right you get those wipes and then you can carry those for the win and that's what you did i saw a couple crazy wombos i think there's like a double or triple kill near the end which kind of solidified it for you guys where you walked over to the core after you invaded a camp or i guess something along those lines but yeah it was an awesome yeah what what was crazy was that we did not get a dragonite that game <laughs> which you know kind of sucks for us but uh 
at the end there, we relied on, you know, just like pushing up to their their keep and then having the Kel'Thuzad Siege where I get the, uh, what was it, the Damned Return, I believe, talent level 20, yeah. which doubles his uh, his Q damage and that just destroys structures. So we just, dis- we melted that keep and then just went in and just destroyed the core right there. Cool. Well, and that was one of the comments that uh, um, Sticks Bahamut on. made. Yeah, and, and I think maybe even sticks was that you guys won a Dragon Star map without ever getting the dragon <laughs> and the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, if if you're looking for any of the vods for that, you can. Uh, I guess we don't have them up on the website yet. We've got a Reddit post, so we'll put that in the notes. And I, you know, I'll get the vods up on the website. Um, you know, hopefully before this goes live, so everyone can check those out again. Trolls.gg slash cots. Um, I do yeah, wanna... sorry about that, man. <laughs> oh. No, no, it, it's there. There was so much to do, and it was like after, the day after that event was just like decompression day because it felt like a whole week of just crazy build up, and yeah. not to mention it took you know like months of planning to get everything coordinated for it. But there are actually a lot of people like to thank for for doing this because it, it's not just you know two or three of us that that put it on. There was a whole whack load of people and a whole bunch of people participated too. Um, so just quickly, like our casters. Cavalier guest Bahamut sticks up for jumping in like literally the day of uh, right. to replace a caster who had to drop out for work related reasons, unfortunately. And Brits actually from Geeks Vazeroth casted a game. He didn't get to play in it because he's on EU server. Uh, but his two teammates, or I guess show hosts from Geeks Vazeroth, Sleepy Gary and Tarly, did end up playing. So the participants, I mean, we had amazing participants. Roz, Mystic, and Bags, all from the Trolls GG Network. Guaz from Weekly Blizz. Bacon Fringe and Scott from Gangbush Squad. Zex, P Flame G, and DJ Tyrant from Nexus Commentaries. Where the, the, that's the team that Mystic beat in the finals there. Ilbeer from Blizz Pro, who was on our team. Ro from Realm Maintenance. TBK Multi and Gizmo Zord from Lords of the Storm. That was the first time we had more than one Lord of the Storm come to a tournament, which was cool. Jeff from Heroes Forge. I, I mean, Jeff's one of my favorite people in the community, too. Great podcast to Heroes Forge. We had him on the show uh, a couple months back. Solid Jake from Town Hall Heroes, who I've never actually met other than through like email correspondence and stuff, but it was great. Wait, having you didn't him get on. to shake his hand while we were at BlizzCon? No, I never even. Oh my really god, saw man! Him. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was just no, it was just busy. And then Sleepy Area Charlie from Geeks of Azeroth and Goki from Heroes Hype, like a great, great crew of participants. And then we had some subs too, Dorsh and Majesty, who too. Thanks for being on on the sub roster and jumping in where we needed you. Also, a lashes, sl- lashes, lashes. Lashes, I, I always forget if it's slashes, lashes, lashes, slashes, but just lashes on on uh, from Blizzard. Bethany is one of the great community managers who helped us with the getting the codes and the, the launcher support, which is amazing. So thank you, Blizzard, for that. And the production team, Liquid, who had the crazy APM. He was producing the whole thing, chatting Discord, responding to Twitch chat, and I think like talking to his kids at the same time. I couldn't believe it. Like you did the job of like five people, just crazy workhorse. I do. I I, I need to take a minute to say. Thank you, Elgato. The stream deck saved my life on Saturday. <laughs> and finally, Wonder Aid and the rest of the guys at uh, or guys at um, Trolls.gg too. So thanks for all the help. Um, I want to throw one other thing out there too. Um, I I didn't tell you this, but like, there are people coming out of the woodwork from various other places. Like, I've had at least five people from Heroes Hype say they want to be involved next time we do this. Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to think about how we're gonna handle the format next time around. It's tough because you don't want too many teams because then right. it becomes way too long. But we'll figure it out, and you know, any feedback's appreciated. But we're definitely gonna be doing this again, probably I guess in the fall, maybe our next one. We'll have to see how, how the scheduling works out for it. But we're definitely gonna do it again. One other thing, now that creators of storm is that we can actually think about other stuff. <laughs> other stuff wait what so one thing that uh fringe average and i've been talking about and they i really want to give you know kudos to fringe for for kind of spearheading this is putting together what i keep trying to push him for the name bush league but he, he never really responds to it so i don't know if, if it's if it's a name he wants to go with or not he probably just hates it but uh what we're thinking of doing is putting together like a, a beer league tournament or not tournament a beer league just league for heroes of the storm um maybe like four teams or so captained by uh show hosts from trolls gg network or gangbush squad 
with the rosters filled up for full of like viewers from the different shows and we'll just have like one night it looks like something monday nights where we do like you know if it's four teams just everyone plays one game kind of thing we keep standings and we have a good time with it uh we're we've actually lined up a caster stixa who did uh creators of the storm with us for the semis and finals in one of the in the prelim games uh he's he said he, you know he's going to be casting a lot of these games for us too so that's pretty cool um so if you're interested just yeah you know, send us a tweet email whatever the nexus trolls at trolls.gg uh, get in touch with us get in our discord just message me or liquid or miss or anybody and we'll we'll make sure we put you on a list to to get one of those teams it's gonna be a lot of fun i think uh another thing too nexus feud we haven't been able to do that in a while we did that in our 50th episode which i guess is 20 episodes ago almost and uh once since then where gang push to controls gg in like a family feud style uh nexus game show uh so i mean in... nexus feud is family feud style nexus stuff, i know right? like... that's the name right <laughs> right isn't that isn't that how we came up with the name nexus feud? it is it is so oh. yeah it was definitely the nexus feud <laughs> yeah it's a lot of fun we're gonna do another one other uh, standalone shows we're not gonna do on, on on an episode they just take too long but it's gonna be uh the gangbush squad defending their their family's crown or whatever you want to call it against nexus commentary so zexorus who we've talked about already probably way too much on the show already uh and his crew will be will be joining uh to take try and take down gangbush squad so that should be fun so keep posted for that too um but actual like news outside of our network i feel like <laughs> like most news is is like internal stuff uh but we do have some outs- outside news too voice communications are actually turning out pretty good it's not all doom and gloom what do you guys think about nexus uh, nexus what do you guys think about voice comms so I haven't actually used them yet. What? How have you not yeah. used voice comms? Uh, cause I've just been playing kind of like um uh not I've been playing like quick match and stuff and I'm like, oh nope, not gonna join that. I don't need to. I just wanna like do my own thing and ignore people. <laughs> so I've been playing like the solo laner. Um or I've been on PTR and so yeah. I you know. I know when I need to come and group up and I don't need to listen to you guys. Like <laughs> it's two minutes into the game. Why are you in the solo lane right now? Like, no, thanks man. <laughs> Even though that's probably not what's happening. I just didn't have the patience for it. So I was just like, Nope. But, but on the plus side, voice comms is great because it's very easy to say, no, I don't want to join. <laughs> so this is yeah. true. Um, I've had a very pleasant experience with it. I haven't met any idiots or douchebags at all everyone's been very nice and it seems like any of the games where everyone's in uh voice comms it just hasn't been very toxic i have i actually in qm people don't seem to join voice chat as much as unranked right. uh, i haven't right. played any ranked mode with it yet but at least the first couple days with unranked like everyone was hopping in pretty much like generally maybe you get like one person on voice comms but it seems like even just from the community's feedback on reddit and everything that you know it's not too bad it's not it's not the doom right. and gloom everyone said it was i mean obviously there's always going to be those those cases that they are and you know the one, yeah. one or two cases of that even happening is is you know obviously a cause for concern especially if it's if it's detrimental to someone's play experience but hey i think it's a good thing for the game glad they're here yeah no absolutely we did have an in-dev video and blog drop you guys get to check this out the storm enforcer stuff yes yeah Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad. I was like, shoot, they better say yes here, because no, yeah. we, we, we got, we got I a segment about like it. Them. There's a number of the skins that I actually like. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the gray main, but the Johanna and the mount, the Storm Strider mount, I, I like. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like a police theme, right? right? So I, I think I like the gray main one a lot. I think gray main is being a little too much skin love. <laughs> he seems to get skins like almost every like major right? skin drop. Um, but still, like it's it's cool. It, uh, it's Watchdog Greymane, so he's got like the kind of old school like seventies like mustache sideburns, and then he hops into like dog form because he's like a, like I guess like a canine uh, unit type dog. And we've also got Enforcer Joanna, who's kind of like one of those like Riot Squad frontline kind of a uh, police. And then we've also got Paramedic Morales, too, as well as a really really cool mount. Uh, those three skins are all epic, so they're not legendary skins, which is kind of cool. But the 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 mount's legendary, so the Storm Strider mount is kind of almost like this like spidery mechanical thing yeah. that looks pretty yeah. sick, and I I kind of really want that. No, some of them definitely look cool. Um, I just I don't know. Maybe it's Greymane's getting too much skin love. I I'm just not happy with the state of Greymane. Period. 
Like, he's always played. He's always getting skins. It's like, dude, there are other heroes in the game. No. Um, I do like the mount, though. You know what the mount really reminded me of? Uh, a Tachikoma from uh, Ghost in the Shell. Except you mount on top of it instead of riding inside of it. But, like, <laughs> it's very Tachikoma fitly. You know what it reminded me of? <laughs> this is, like, way off base and probably doesn't have much bearing if you've have you seen wild wild west starring will smith hell have, yes it's that, a great movie and all you haters out there suck <laughs> where they have that huge spider thing that kind of like yes. comes out kind of reminds spider. me of that, yeah, a yeah, mechanical yeah. spider it reminds me of that i haven't seen that movie probably in oh, well over a decade so then you need to probably, watch it again it's sir. probably my bastardized remembrance or no 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 of, it's pretty close to that yeah. and you need to watch the movie again little did i realize we had a wild wild west fanboy in the crowd here <laughs> right. i got um i can't remember if it was haloran or hawks and lull but one of them did not agree with my belief that wild wild west was a great movie and we had a little twitter disagreement about that not too long ago <laughs> i've probably so. seen it like once or twice and i don't know i kind of enjoyed it It was during will smith's like you know peak, it's heyday. peak smith right yeah um but apparently he did not like doing it though and thought it was it sucked well I guess they can't like them all that they do, right? Um, we also had a PTR patch drop. We'll be talking about that in detail in a bit after like with Desports Corner, but we had reworked Medivh, Sonia, and Anna. The links are in the patch notes. But before we get into that, it's time for Liquid's Esports Corner. Hey, yo, how you doing? It's time for Liquid's Esports Corner. That's right. You're going to want to stick around for this. Take it away, Liquid. All right. So just a couple things we're going to go over. Um, last night on Troll and HCC, we kind of did a deeper dive on the Western Clash. So if you want a lot of talk about Western Clash, go check that out. Um, it should be uploaded tomorrow afternoon like normal. And then uh, let's go ahead and jump into some other things. HCC ANZ started on... ANZ? ANZ. That's exactly what brought it up last night, too. It's <laughs> uh, started on the 27th. Um, that was last night from today. Or actually, it was yesterday during the day. Um, but it's running now. Uh, check it out. There's actually some really good games. Uh, Skimmy's casting, along with a host of other people. So definitely check those games out. They're pretty good. Um, also, the HEC Chinese playoffs finished today. We have SPT in the number one slot. The one in the number two spot and CE in the number three slot. Um, those are the three teams from China that are going to the Eastern Clash, which is not this weekend, but the following weekend, March 9th. Um, this weekend, starting at 5 a.m. Eastern on Friday, the Western Clash begins. Nice. Definitely check that out. Um, first game is I'm going blank now because I'm trying to think of who it is. Uh, which is usually the way it works for me. Uh, <laughs> first game should be Dignitas Heroes Hearth. Yes. So definitely I'm, check that out. I'm really excited to see how the regions stack up. I mean, I think generally people kind of know, but you never really know until they they get through these kind of tournaments. These are national right. tournaments. You know, lend to a little bit more excitement. We haven't had one, I guess, since BlizzCon, right? Uh, that's true. And I did mess up. I said uh, March 9th. I meant March 16th for the Eastern Clash. Apologies. Gotcha. Is that is that all of Liquid's Esports Corner? Uh, yeah. Normally you ask me a question, then we go down a tangent and like <laughs> last forever. Uh, I was contemplating asking one. And I was like, maybe. I feel just... like you weren't going that way. So. Well, we know what happens when I open the can of worms. Last time with, I think it was you and Shiz, I just kept opening it and opening it, and it I couldn't put the cap back on it. But, <laughs> That's um, true. I mean, how about we talk about favorites for the clash? Like, is there any surprises you expect to maybe do better than you than um, people would think, or do you think we're just going to see what people expect European the Europeans to dominate Dignitas probably to win it? Everybody expects Dignitas to win it a hundred percent. The interesting thing for me is I actually disagree with that. Ooh, I'm not controversy. Now, like having it. said that, I watched the Dignitas hype video, and it's like, um, how am I supposed to like disagree with uh, Dignitas winning after that video? Um, but I think I'm going to go with 
So I, I said Fnatic's going to beat Dig. And not only did I say Fnatic was going to beat Dig. So we did predictions last night. Not only did I say Fnatic was going to beat Dig, but Fnatic was going to beat Dig in the winner's final and then in the grand final, thus securing their truly momentous performance as it should be in the world that we live in. But I also don't know that that's really realistic. <laughs> um, Tempo Storm has a chance. They're playing Zealots. There's a good chance they'll get out of at least um, that first bracket and into the second one. Uh, Heroes Hearth is... I, I love Heroes Hearth. They're not going to beat Team Dignitas. It, it, you got to think that's good experience, though. Because this is, oh, probably, this is probably their first international tournament, right? And we did have absolutely. a comment in chat, too. I guess Gold Club. We forgot about yeah, Gold yeah. Club. Gold Club at the end of the year, last year. Yeah. Um, the other... That's what happens when I wasn't really paying attention to you, but was trying to look something up. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that I thought was interesting that Cavalier Guest brought up last night was Freedom is in EU boot camping right now. The other three teams boot camped in NA and then are traveling to EU. So take that as you will. Yeah, the foreign boot camps often seem to reap a lot of rewards for teams historically, don't they? Yes. And I expect the same to be the case here. But we'll see, right? It's it's going to be ugly no matter what they do, honestly. So um, we'll have to see what happens. Um, I guess one other thing I would also point out, which is unrelated to HTC specifically, but Heroes of the Dorm is still ongoing, and uh, they're live now, actually, with Week 4. So don't tune into them yet. yet. <laughs> Wait until we're done. <laughs> then and then go watch. <laughs> right. Um, oh, oh, one other thing. Uh, Open Division's on a break for the next three weeks, I think. So Heroes Hype Amateur Series will be coming back. Oh, sweet. Cool. I uh, think that's it. That's been Liquid's Esports Corner. On to the PTR patch. Because I know a lot of people want to talk, hear us talk about this. Probably They probably want to hear Mystic more than me and Liquid, too. Because he usually has the best kind of strategical analysis, analysis of all this thing, of all these things. Well, words are hard, Liquid. You, you were I told you. <laughs> Nobody ever believes me, but words are hard, man. <laughs> so we'll start with Medivh. Um, mostly because of the three that got touched here, Medivh, Sonia, and Ana, mm -hmm. Medivh is probably the closest to my heart. He's the one that I've spent a lot of time and effort trying to get to learn because I made the decision one time at one point being like, I want to get to know this hero well so I can, you know, play to that high level. And I feel like because he's a high skill cap hero um, that requires a lot of coordination and everything, you can get a lot out of him if you're really good at him. Obviously, a little bit more so rely on your teammates, you know, reacting appropriately as well as opposed to other carry heroes or not carry heroes, but high skill cap heroes. But still, Mediv, they decided to change him quite a bit actually too like quite a few things here have been altered on Mediv. so let's go over some of the basics and we'll, we'll see what mystic and liquid have to say as well as myself on these so the big changes were to his base kit actually arcane rift got a damage reduction by 15 percent which is fairly significant but you get master's touch baseline now so the only problem with that is is the baseline master's touch requires 40 enemy heroes hit with arcane rift before you die to get it uh, instead of the 30. And I found the 30 yeah, hard, but 40 is going to be... It's baseline now. It should be harder. Well, obviously. Like, but I'm, on, just, I'm just pointing it out that it is more difficult to complete this quest because it, you, if, if you die, let's say, like level 9, you haven't completed this quest, like, good luck doing it after I mean, before the game is done. Mm -hmm. If you die at level 9 and you haven't completed the quest, you're doing something wrong anyway. God, Liquid, it was just an example. Let's say level <laughs> 7, I don't know. I warned you before the show I was in rare form tonight, man. Yeah, it was more if you, if you if you lose the stacks mid game, it's hard to get them back. Your host. Because yeah, yeah. 40 like you know, if if you're at mid game and you got to get 40 again without dying, right. uh, and I feel like it's a little bit easier to die mid to late game than it is early game so if you if you lost that chance on farming in lane uh you might be a little hosed uh force of will got a cooldown increase from five to eight seconds so you can't spam that w as much as you used to but it got a little nice little tweak here upon expiry 20 percent of the damage absorbed is returned as a heal you used to have to spec into this at level 16 of course level 16 would give you 50 percent healing back um it feels 
pretty tiny. <laughs> let, let me tell you, kind of only getting 20% back. It's not like he's all of a sudden a healer or anything, but it is nicer than having nothing, I guess, and gives a little bit more advantage to those that can mitigate really good damage with Force of Wills. Portal's cooldown has been reduced from 20 to 16 seconds, and the reason for that is generally is talent tree. You, you'll, you'll become a bit more apparent as we go through it. Portals will last for six seconds, so there's still 10 second downtime, unless you talent into it. You can get that down to a three second downtime. You can't have always up portals like you used to be uh, because of how some of the talents have been tweaked. Um, so oh, also his uh, health in, and regen scaling are now 4.5% instead of 4%. So he does actually scale a little bit better into the late game for health and health regen. Mystic, like what what are you making of, of Medivh here? If you had a chance to try him out or at least examine his kit? I mean, I think that Arcane Rift, um, it felt like a long time to get those 40 heroes, but since you have it at the beginning of the game, I felt like it was okay. Uh, Force of Will, I really like this change just because every five seconds it was kind of annoying playing against Medivh as any other hero because whenever you attack someone you felt like his protect was up and then you dealt no damage so this gives a little bit more of a window of counterplay for other people while it also gives something back to the medieval player if they time their force of wills correctly you know at the 20 percent damage absorbed into a heal and then portals portals are like what make medieval honestly he's super strong with those and uh well, let, let's see how these uh, talents affect him, really. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to quickly say about like, the Force of Will counterplay, too. Um, this does give a bigger window for those last rites, those pyroblasts and everything to get through. Because before, you know, if even if you saw the, the, the Force of Will go out and then you cast a pyroblast or last rites, like, you had a very short amount of time to ensure it wasn't going to be up again, in which time, in case it would be completely negated by a basic ability, right? So um, yeah. now you've actually got that opportunity. Eight seconds is a lot longer to like watch for that Medi Protect go off and know that you've got that window to cast those like longer big damage abilities without having to worry about a protect going off okay right. so going to the talent tree yeah his portals are going to be a lot different than before uh, somewhat because of his level one talents too um not the first two but the last one the first one's wings of celerity its movement speed bonus of raven form is increased by 50 percent raven's intellect mana and now health regen increased by 75 percent when in raven form and the final option this talent here portal mastery and this is one i really like um because they've changed it from before and before it was kind of tougher to use but now both portals can be manually placed using portal mastery just like before but now the one key is now to place the the two ends of the portals whereas you can still use the e key to do like the instant cast from like your feet to wherever you're pointing to um, that also, and I think this is a really impactful change they've made to this, you can cast the portals while in Raven form and it won't break Raven form if you take this talent. Um, is, is there any reason not to take Portal Mastery? Like, that just seems so incredibly powerful now. Um, If you don't, or if you want the speed on Wings of Celerity, maybe, just to catch up to the enemies to scout them better but yeah portal mastery is like this this is insane like if you because you can cast portals and not break raven form it's like is there actually any counterplay to that really <laughs> yeah and i mean raven's intellect seems fairly weak the only time i think i'd take raven's intellect would be on like an a ram map where health and mana are just so important that you really need that extra regen but this portal mastery it just it just got so much baked into it um and the fact that the portal's you can put him down while in Raven form. One of the one of the downsides of, of Medivh is if you get in in deep in your scout in the team, and you need to drop a portal. You don't want to fall into their team and, and and get that portal away. But now you can drop that portal from complete safety, no matter where you are. You don't have to expose yourself to drop those portals. And I think that's huge value. Yeah. Level four, we've got mage armor. Allies get twenty five armor for four seconds when first entering a portal. This is only the first time. You can't go back and forth. You can't blaze bunker it. So you can't just keep exiting and entering to keep getting that 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 armor. Uh, Raven Familiar, when you exit a portal, you get a Raven Buddy that dives the first hero you auto-attack. It also applies a 30% slow for two and a half seconds. And this actually happens every time you enter a portal. It's not just the once. Uh, so you can get that little extra CC there. And then Dust of Appearance. <laughs> it's funny because they, they talked about you know town diversity, but I still feel like 
there's not a ton on these lower stages because the dust of appearance just seems very powerful to me increase raven for vision by 25 percent. you can activate to increase bonus by 200 percent for five seconds and also reveals when activated this is kind of like a two for one they've merged two talents together previously in level four dust of appearance and whatever the other one was called uh like raven sight or something uh so now you get the you don't have to choose between getting that stealthy reveal or the increased vision you can get both baked into the same talent what do you think mystic Mm, well, level four here. While Dust of His Appearance is good, Raven Familiar is also really good in that in the fact that um, if everybody goes to the portals multiple times, then you basically like have a a <laughs> Raven machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's really good. Uh, I think Mage Armor is really really huge though. Because if you think about it, it's like 25 armor for four seconds at level four. That's quite insane because like Uther only gives 15 for every target that he heals and Blaze Bunker gives 25, but that's an ultimate, right? And this, it's like you put down a portal. If your allies go through it, 25 armor for four seconds. I think it's, I think this talent would be balanced if Hanzo like still had his uh, sharpened arrowhead talent. At in its like base form originally, so this is this is I think kind of on that level almost. I still love Dust of Appearance mostly because it makes the scouting side of things so much easier. Like the the Raven form's vision is is very small until you get like a Dust of Appearance upgrade, and plus like being able to hit that activatable to get that big area of, of view through bushes through everything, kind of like a Tastar or Oracle, it just feels so powerful but i can see your i can see your argument for mage armor i mean when you're using portals usually you're doing it offensively or defensively and in both cases 25 armor is useful so i could see that having a place for sure level seven we've got mystic assault i wonder if mystics gonna like this one or not <laughs> uh if arcane rift hits a hero medivh's next basic attack within six seconds deals 40 percent more damage and heals for 40 percent of the damage dealt we're starting to see this on mages a lot more like that auto attack um talent that that procs your auto attacks and gives them extra crit, crit damage we've got arcane explosion deals 90 damage to nearby enemies when force will expires deals an additional 100 percent of the damage taken as well up to 365 bonus damage i guess they realized we gotta cap this just in case those wombo combos get protected and blow everybody up with an insane amount of damage and then Force of Magic, preventing 268 or more damage with Force of Will, grants Medivh 20% spell power for 12 seconds, can stack twice. Now, the way that I was going, and this might be because my play level is a little bit lower, but I liked Arcane Explosion. And part of the reason why is there's less conditionals on it. Um, Mystic Assault, I felt like the heal wasn't significant enough to, to and I guess the damage uh, to necessarily warrant that. And force of magic, I don't like having to do the protect successfully before getting my spell power. Uh, it felt too conditional, whereas the arcane explosion was like consistent damage. Of course, like you know, your force will target has to be around something, but it also can give more wave clear. Um, but also, it does synergize really well with the later talent that we'll talk about in a bit. But Mystic, tell me why I should be taking one of the other two here. <laughs> okay, well, I think arcane explosion is actually really good if the enemy team like has a lot of melee and stuff like that because. The explosion range isn't exactly that big, but if the other team is like melee heavy, it's actually really, really good. Um, Force of Magic, I agree with you. It's it's kind of hard to use, and besides, like it gives Medivh twenty percent spell power, which only works for his Q, because his W doesn't really affect by spell power. His Portal not really affected by spell power. Neither of his ultimates are actually affected by spell power either. So it's only his Q, and it's like if you dodge his Q or like force him to miss or something, then. You know, it's like uh, you gotta wait for half of this to be over before you you can actually use it. Uh, Mystic Assault, I think, is only good where you can actually put out damage kind of safely. Like once again, if they have like kind of melee heavy or like very slow heroes, then you can go in and you can throw out your Q and then auto attack, back up a little bit, throw out Q, auto attack, and you're kind of like half of a hyper carry in that sense where you're kind of like an auto attack sustained damage mage at that point if you take this talent so i think it has its place 
Yeah, one of the reasons I like Arcane Explosion is because of level 13. I feel like level 7 on its own isn't a very powerful tier for Mediv, but level 13 definitely has some strong talents like Circle Protection. Talented Force of Will applies to heroes around the target, and the range around the target has been increased from 2.5 to 3. Um, and it's a talented Force of Will. It used to be untalented, so if you go Arcane Explosion, they're all exploding when they're expiring. So if they all get hit with a big like flame strike or something, as you're or pyro blast or whatever, when they explode, they're doing 100% of the damage back. Obviously, it's capped, but plus the the 90 damage they were doing baseline too. So you stack that on a few heroes, you can do a lot of damage to whatever you're trying to wombo combo or prevent the wombo combo from happening on. So I really like that kind of synergistic bit. Uh, Enduring will is the next option here. If Force of will absorbs. 268 damage. Its cooldown is reduced to three seconds, so you can spam your enduring will a bit more. Reabsorption, force of will healing will go up from 20 to 50% of the damage taken. Now, what do you think about these ones, Mystic? Hmm. I think circle of protection in is strong in specific cases where uh, your team is like very grouped up, either your back line or your front line. So it it's kind of like half and half. I think it's it's a very general use talent. Enduring Will, uh, it's very good in the fact that if you can absorb that damage, you basically have old Medivh's uh, W cooldown, which, you know, it's like block damage. Oh, it's up again in like uh, very, very few seconds. And Reabsorption, mm, I think it's in the same state as old Reabsorption, where people didn't really take it as much. Uh, I think the other two are just flat out better than this one, but... Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. If they have like very large targeted, uh, very large targeted telegraphed moves, then I feel like you could go reabsorption. But other than that, mm, I think the other two are better. Yeah, I feel like enduring will. If you know you're going to be countering a lot of big bursts to get that damage amount to get that re that reset on the cooldown, or not reset, but lowered cooldown, you get more value out of that. Whereas reabsorption. Maybe I'm more like the sustainy bits because you can get a little extra healing out of it instead, but you might not be able to proc your enduring will might be the way to go. But now that circle protection with like so many people blowing up in what whoever's face it is, I found to be pretty powerful and does like, quite a bit of damage too, especially if you're absorbing a big impact from someone. Level mm -hmm. 16. There's some interesting ones in here too. Arcane charge. After hitting here with arcane rift, next rift will do 15% more damage. This might be an argument for that 20% spell power Mediv uh, talent on level 7, because now you're stacking that with 15% more damage as well. Temporal Flex. Basic attacks reduce Mediv's heroic cooldown by 1 second, and hitting enemy heroes reduces the cooldown by 3 seconds. I played around with this with Polymorph. You can get a Polymorph up pretty quickly again if you're in a quite the yeah. like prolonged fight. Uh, even Leyline, same thing. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with Temporal Flex. And then Stable Portal. This reduces the portal's cooldown by 25% and increases the duration by 50% used to do have to take two talents to get the effect of this the only thing is that now instead of having portals up all the time there still is a three second window between casts where you cannot have a portal available um so what do you, what do you think on this one i i really love temporal flux but i can see a place for stable portal for sure yeah i think temporal flux really increases medivh's utility with his ultimates like a lot because if you're in a team fight or even if you're not in a team fight because uh I think basic attacks just um, reduce cooldown just normally, just any basic attack. But I think your Q has to ha hit heroes for the three seconds. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So if you're in a team fight where you're hitting multiple heroes with your Q, then that stacks up really quick. And yeah. I mean, if you hit enough targets, you're gonna cast a second polymorph in the same team fight. That's that's quite insane. So temporal flux is pretty good. Arcane Charge, yeah, if you get the other talent that increases your spell power, I think it's pretty good. Otherwise, if you don't need Temporal Flux, you don't need that utility, you need more damage, Arcane Charge is, is still pretty good. Stable Portal is also a very strong talent because without it, you know, you have that you have less utility with your portals, and this gives a lot of it back to Medivh that they took away where you had 100% of time on portals, which was really, really strong. And now with this, I'm kind of glad they put it on a later... A later talent tier so it makes Medivh more manageable at the in the early game and then you know he still gets his power back in the or you know with his portals more in the late game so it, it's still very strong even with the three second downtime yeah it's one frustrating thing adjusting to this new Medivh 
because of the duration of the portals. So almost everyone would take at level one the extended portal duration. But now that you don't really have that, well, you don't have that option at all, you're stuck with six second portals instead of whatever they talented into in, in, on the live server currently. So you just got to remember those portals disappear a lot quicker than they used to. So just make sure you yeah. take them and don't, don't, don't wait to get through that portal uh, because it might be gone before you get there. Uh, level 20s haven't changed that much. Glyph of Polybomb, that's the faster, bigger spread as for Polymorph. Medivh Cheats, you can redirect Leyline. Guardian of Tears Fall, Arcane Rift can instantly kill minions. Arcane Brilliance, 200 mana and 10% spell power for 10 seconds to all nearby heroes. And then Dust of, Dust of Appearance, which is actually the only change in the patch notes. It lost its mana cost. Uh, you can stealth the hero for 20 seconds with that. Um, what I usually go here, if I go Leyline, and I usually go Leyline, Medivh Cheats was just the way I usually go here. Uh, occasionally, Guardian of Tears Fall, if we were like seriously behind in the Siege and the Wave Clear, and we were just falling behind late game. Um, but do you have any arguments for the other ones here, Mystic? I think there is an argument for Arcane Brilliance now if you went the straight-out Q build, because that's just more mana for you and 10% more spell power, right? So that's uh, just more power. Uh, Dust, of, Dust of Appearance, I mean, the reason that people took it or didn't take it was not because of the mana cost honestly so i don't think that changed yeah. very much and the other ones are kind of the same thing honestly you know with the talent at level one i'm surprised they didn't put something at level 20 like medieval can cast every single one of his spells in bird form because <laughs> that yeah that would be effed up dude that's uh, not yeah. gonna, that will <laughs> not work come on now i i'm still surprised that they added that at level one i was like Where's the counterplay in that? He just puts out portals and he's invincible. You can't do anything. Yeah. Just wait for him to run out of mana or something. At least he can't do damage. If you could do damage from Raven form without coming out of it, that would be broken. You could go up to someone who's like far back behind their base trying to run away with a shred of health and there's just no place they're safe, right? Because the Raven is coming. Um, yeah, I... Is, is there an argument here for a Q build? Because, I mean, we kind of glossed over a lot of those talents, just talked about them a bit peripherally, but, I mean, there's a lot of stacking Arcane Rift damage that you can get out of here and spell power. And then if you throw, say, like an Ana, uh, whatever, Stim Drone, Nano Boost into the mix, like, are we talking about crazy damage you can output from a div here or is it something that's just too difficult to pull off because there's a lot of conditions involved like you gotta keep hitting heroes with your cues in order for it to work you gotta get your circle of, of uh, protections like uh, off you know with with a certain amount of damage hitting them in order to proc the the, the spell power increase like is there is there a cue build here to be had because i can see blizzard kind of pointing us in that direction but doesn't necessarily mean as good uh, yes, there is. I think that if you take all those Q talents and just focus mainly on yourself, then you can be a very mobile, like, sustained damage mage. Considering you don't miss, like, too many of your Qs because, you know, you want to be hitting those to keep your uh, cooldown reduction up and then, you know, complete that quest and stuff. If you focus mainly on yourself and you go that Q build, Oh man, it's going to be really hard to take you down because essentially your portals has almost the same mobility as Genji. You have a protect on yourself, which is similar to Genji, and then your Q does pretty good damage as long as you consistently hit your targets. And plus, his ultimate, you know, it's it's his ultimate. It's, it's pretty good utility with the poly bomb and like the ley line is pretty insane uh, team fight oriented utility as well. So, how is Medivh different? I know there's a lot of like differences here, but how is he gonna how should we be adjusting to him or like where should we be picking him where we didn't before or is he just the same but with like a little bit more flexibility than he used to have uh in my opinion you would pick him if you wanted like kind of a backup support obviously he's not going to be doing as much healing as a normal support so but his w's are still very strong so if you need to protect a target then you can do it for that and then his portals aren't as strong early, but they're about maybe a little bit less strong late, even if he, you know, he can do it in Raven form. So his portals are still very good contention there. And then his Q build, if you go the Q build, I'd argue that it's stronger. So he provides that extra damage where you might not expect Medivh to do it before. So for now, like as for adjusting to Medivh, like against him, be wary when he puts up the protect like you're gonna have to do damage to him like little by little and then when he puts up the protect 
you have to stop your damage because a lot of his talents are take so and so much damage and then he gets benefits so whenever he puts up that protect you have to stop attacking and then when that falls off then you go hard because it's uh, on a longer cooldown and he if he doesn't get those benefits then he's much easier to blow up is he still as counter dive as he used to be with the only the eight second cooldown uh, I'd say so, especially if he goes for the talent where if it reduces a certain amount of damage, then it's reduced to three seconds, because if they dive someone and you put that protect on and it protects that much damage, then you have it again three seconds later and they probably won't be able to finish off that target. I still can't wait to see using the circle protects on like a whole bunch of melee heroes blowing up all at the same time wombo comboing someone because that's that's my that's my dream <laughs> so hopefully i'll be able to see some clips of that in the near future okay so we had some changes to ana as well not as extensive um i'll go over them here and then we can just talk about first impressions and we'll talk about her, the talents have changed too so one of the big things that's been a problem the quote-unquote problem with ana before since she's been released is that she's got very limited self-healing uh, this was in the thick of the double support meta. People are like, okay, so you're adding a support here that needs another support. So, you know, you're just kind of promoting this double support meta. Well, Blizzard, I guess, has taken a look at this and taken a look at Ana over the months that she's been out and said, okay, we're going to give her some heal self-healing back. And the way that you're going to get that is through her trait, Shrike. This is where you, you deal poison damage to people you're auto-attacking. Well, now half of that damage that you auto attack as poison is going to come back to you as healing. So you can actually get a significant amount of healing coming back to your Shrike trait. However, they didn't just stop there. And I think off camera Mystic said they should have stopped there and that would have been good. But they decide why, to... Why stop there when you can redo the entire character <laughs> that was just released? God, man, it's like you don't even know Blizzard. Blizzard likes to have lots of little notes in their patches, yeah. <laughs> and they put quite a few here on Ana. Uh, so one of the big things is her healing dart's been nerfed by 9%. Uh, Biotic Grenade, uh, it only amplifies Ana's healing output, not other healing sources as well. So I guess they're trying to discourage the double support with Ana. Uh, the duration of the amplified healing, though, has been increased from 3 to 4 seconds, I guess, to compromise for this. Uh, it's a, it is a lot easier to get two cues off now within that biotic grenade so you can actually get a little bit more burst healing out of her because of that uh nano boost the cooldown has been increased from 50 to 60 seconds and the mana cost has been increased as well and eye of horus her other ultimate self canceling no longer places on a 10 second cooldown but other than that the cooldown is also reduced from 60 to 45 which is pretty significant however the number of shots that you get has also been reduced from eight to six Oof. I'm I'm calling an this is an Anna nerf. Even with the self healing here, I feel like you've lost a lot of the healing. But we're gonna go over some talents too. There's some ones here that make me sad as well. But what are yeah. your, what are your guys' first impressions of Anna? The rework here. Do you think is she is this nerf a buff? Is this needed? The self healing. What what are we looking at here, boys? Nerf. Yeah, nerf. <laughs> <laughs> we that, we can just leave it there. Okay, and Sonia. No, okay, we'll move into Anna's chat talents a little bit then too. So consensus is that she's been nerfed then, at least with the trolls here. Uh, let's so let's look at her talents because there's some further nerfs in here to some of the talents that I used to like taking. Grenade calibration level one this is that crappy grenade questing talent. I actually wrote that in the notes. Crappy grenade questing talent. I don't even know what it does. It now adds a base functionality that amplified healing will now work on all healing sources. So it gives it a little bit less crappiness. Uh, piercing darts. This is the one that I usually went. Um, this is where if you hit enough heroes with your sleep dart, you get uh, sleep dart being able to pierce and your healing being healing cube being able to pierce once you get to the second reward tier. And you got range increases of 50% on both of those as you re reach those tiers. Well, they decided to rein that range in a little bit. So now instead of 50% bonus Nate range, you only get 25% bonus range on her piercing darts when you get those ta those reward tiers. That hurts a lot because you typically need to be a little further away from the action to be safe as Ana because all you have for your own peels is your sleeping dart. And then finally, Detachable Box Magazine. They got a new first tier reward here. So after reaching max doses five times on heroes, Ana receives Shrike healing from all enemies. I guess I should have noted that the Shrike before that you get healing from was only on heroes. So this can now apply to minions or, or mercenaries or bosses, I guess. So we're not going over every single town. We're just going over the stuff that changed. But level one's pretty important. It sets the tone. 
I'm looking at this piercing darts and saying, yikes, I still kind of want to go that even though it's been nerfed. So that's a whole harder to nerf in my opinion. Do you guys think piercing darts is still the way to go? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can, so... can I say there is no good answer here? <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is called entrapment. I'm entrapping you guys into giving us a bad answer. Like, what what do we actually got here? We got they they took away the uh, the healing on her grenade to everybody's healing, and they put it on a talent that you have to work to towards to get. Okay, but then they also nerfed the other piercing darts talent, which. I'm okay with that, you know, nerfing the the range on the E and Q. That's that's fine with me. But the fact of the matter here is that you need it for the piercing, which is a lot of healing. You still get the piercing. It... You still get the piercing. Just so well, you know. yeah, but but what I'm getting at is like you want to take this talent, but you also want the grenade, but you want this talent too. So it's like you you really want both of those because you want to increase everybody's healing along with having the piercing as well. And now you can't have both. And then the detachable box magazine, I think that's okay because it, it gives you healing from all enemies, but the other two are way better in my opinion. See, the problem with this is that Ana was generally uh, drafted in a niche where she amplifies all healing, right? So she'd, she'd be drafted with double healers. Now, because of this uh, level one thing here, we have she can either help out with the healing more with uh, just her own piercing darts, or she can help out with the healing in her grenade, where she originally has both, and now she has either one or the other. Yeah, I think I kind of like old Anna, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you so far. Um, Everybody well, likes old Anna. Yeah, level four, aim down sights. This is the activatable that increases your vision and basic attack range, but you, you did have a slower amount of movement speed. Uh, it's got a shorter cooldown now it's three second cooldown instead of 10 second cooldown so you can spam it a bit more um but this is up uh, against a pretty popular talent pick in uh, your sleep darts applying doses uh so that i mean i don't not sure if this is necessarily gonna be picked as much anymore but hey i guess now that you've got that basic attack range getting bigger you get self healing off the, the your strike damage maybe there's an argument for this now uh air strike is the other one that got modified here this is the increased range and decreased cooldown of grenade. I, to be honest, I've never even taken this talent. I know people have talked about it before because um, you get like 275% additional range. and uh, But the it takes f well, now three seconds, but it used to take four seconds for your grenade to actually go off in an area. It just felt like a super clunky talent and never found a use for it or a reason to take it. Um, I don't know. What do you think about these, these talents here on level four now, Mystic? Uh, I found airstrike really fun, just because uh, <laughs> you know I'd be I'd just be in another lane entirely. I call care package and then I throw it up in like my neighboring lane, and then you know if they need healing, they just walk to it, right? It's like I, I thought it was really really funny. I used it just because you know allies need healing across the map. You know, just have the plane do it for me instead of walking <laughs> in that lane. <laughs> Maybe to uh, piddle around with it a little bit then too. It, it was just a fun talent for me to take anyway, but. Uh, yeah, I, I really liked it just for the decreased cooldown of the grenade. I think that was very helpful. The aim down sights, uh, having three second cooldown instead of ten, I think that's really, really awesome because it increases the versatility of her of the aim down sights instead of having to sit there for a while, like changing and then, you know, them coming on you changing back and then you can't change immediately again. So increases that versatility there. It's almost like hammer siege mode now, because the cooldown is probably yeah. the same and if you take Hover Siege, it's almost exactly the same. Okay, so uh, then level 7's got some changes too. Debilitating Dart reduces the damage done by target by 50% for 4 seconds. Uh, this was an activatable dart you could shoot out. The cooldown is reduced from 45 to 20 seconds. And then Mind Numbing Agent, this is the kind of go-to least I usually used. Um, spell power reduction per strike stack on enemy heroes would reduce their spell power, I believe it was. By uh, by fifteen percent per per stack of shrike, but now it's only ten percent. Uh, so obviously they they decided to nerf that as well because there, there aren't enough enough other nerfs here, right? Uh, I mean, debilitating dart to get a buff. So I guess that's an argument to be made there. So what do you think about these ones, Mystic? Mm, 
mind numbing agent was like really good just because it was really easy to apply and i think it's still pretty good even at 10 percent debilitate debilitating dart now though is pretty insane because 20 second cooldown for 50 percent damage <laughs> reduction is uh is quite good I think the only problem with this talent was its medium of delivery here because it was the same kind of animation as Sleeping Dart, right? Which is almost like, if you look at it, a 0.25 second channel time and then the dart flies really slow. If they changed it where, you know, you press the button and she fires her Q instead, like the Q missile, except it's a debilitating dart. I think that would fix a lot of its issues, even if it was at 45 second cooldown. But 20 second cooldown, 50% damage reduction for four seconds on a target, I think is pretty good. What I'm seeing Blizzard trying to do here is make more of like a long range auto attack key type build um, with fixing aim down sights. Uh, you can still get my numbing agent, like you mentioned, but you can more safely apply doses from a further range since you've got that increased range on your basic attacks. Maybe that's the way they're trying to go here too, because you can also combo that with, um, you know, additional healing from applying a lot of stacks or level twenty, where you can put people to sleep if you get five stacks on them too. Maybe there's some sort of shrike build, shrike auto attack build here that that's that might form out of this this change. Mm-hmm. Okay, Liquid. I know who you've been waiting to talk about. My girl is back. <laughs> Not the girl you're thinking of. Valyria's still nerfed all the hell. It makes me sad. <laughs> but Sonya never think, really left. I think she's okay, no. actually. Valyria. <laughs> Valyria is okay. She's she's okay now. But um, actually, uh, I've been I've I've played a lot of Sonya this season, and like, I don't how's know that season did... going for you. <laughs> No, no, actually, I have, like, I have a ton of wins on Sonya. Oh, sweet. Um, it's when I don't play Sonya that I lose. <laughs> <laughs> but, I like, I don't know why, but, like, I feel like Blizzard felt she needed a buff, and I have no idea why they felt that way. So is that way that you're looking at this? You're looking at this like a buff? Yes. Um, sorry. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so as our tank player leaves, we'll talk about Sonya, but that's okay because we've got Mystic here who plays everything. So level one, Sonya got a few changes. Furious Blow, every fourth cast of Slam costs no Fury and does 40% more damage. I haven't actually seen what the UI looks like on this, but I imagine it's probably similar to like Simero, like you can kind of know when that fourth one's going to be winding up. Uh, War Paint, same thing as before. Basic attack seal for 30% of damage dealt. And Tough as Nails. This is the, the block talent's been changed a little bit. Now it's a 12 second charge time instead of 5 seconds. But the charges do charge 200% faster when Fury Speed Bonus is active, which is pretty much all the time when you're attacking. Um, so the one thing that I think really changes about Sonya too, and like looking through her whole talent tree, um, the basic attack, I feel like you can really get a lot. Of amplification on our basic attacks which makes war paint even though it hasn't been changed i feel like there's a buff here and it might become more apparent as we talk about further level talents um but mystic are you like a, why do you think they why did they change block into tough as nails doesn't seem like kind of an odd change because it pretty much is the same thing except maybe you can't go off and stack it away and then come back to lane and have those charges of block up you actually have to be in lane engaging to have those and what do you think about the new furious blows talent too every fourth cast of slam does an extra 40 percent more damage is that enough because it's 10 percent spread out but i guess you get a little bit more burst if you time it right okay uh i guess i'll talk about tough as nails first so i think they wanted to change block to be more engaging because what was block originally well, every so-and-so seconds, you gain a block charge, and if the enemy hits you, then it, you take less damage, right? Now, for this, you have to be auto-attacking, and I think overall, like, it's a, hey, we want you to be doing something for this block charge instead of just standing there and just gaining block charges. So th- there's that, and I, I still think Tough as Nails is pretty good, especially if you need block. Uh, Furious Blow, I think, is really good only like because there are talents later along the line that uh, that actually benefit the slam build more more and more. And War Paint is still like good as you said that there are also talents down the line that would buff her auto attacks and that makes it just better. So, I, what did you say about tough as nails though? So it's more of an engaging talent now because you actually have to yes. be in lane to do it. Um, yeah. It seems kind of like the way that they're 
going through this there's almost like a w build that's going to shake up yes uh, as well as like 100%. an auto attacky kind of build almost too which gives you a little bit more self-sustain as well too because the more damage you deal if you take war paint the more heals you get back um i guess it'll be interesting as we go through the talent tree to see what everyone's thoughts are uh let's i don't know if i would call it an auto attacky build there's definitely a build where you get more heals but it's not necessarily just auto attacks. Well, you know as I mean? we go through, I know it's obviously not just auto attacks, but yeah, as we go yeah, through, yeah. let's see if I can justify some stuff here. I'm already getting flack and chat from it for it too, but we'll see how this goes. So level four, <laughs> shattered ground, splash damage of slam increases to 75% of your primary target damage. And I did the math here. This actually triples the splash damage from what it is yep. untalented. It, it's huge. It's so big. Oh and my the God. splash travels 66% farther. Which is pretty pretty long. It's so much fun. Yep. We got Hurricane. Not much has changed here. Remove slows and roots when spin is cast. Cooldown of the spin has been decreased by one per second if you take this. And then Battle Rage. This is a uh, Ferocious Healing and Merc Lord put together into Dude. one. Mercs Dude. nearby get 25% damage boost. Then you can also activate the heal for 10% of your Sony's max health Dude. on a 30 second cooldown and source three charges. So much fun. <laughs> oh my god. The lane push with that is insane. I was playing a Dragonshire map and after seven, um, it's like super, super easy to uh take a camp, the uh bruiser camp. We pushed I I I solo pushed to the keep. So through the wall through the fort wall, through the fort, through the keep wall, and then finally lost my bruisers at the keep. And one of the nice things about Battle Rage too is your 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 healing that you get it doesn't cost Fury because nope. Ferocious Healing did, so right. you get a bit of a pickle. Free. But yeah, yeah, this is just free. You get, you get three touches of it too. So you go bang, awesome. bang, bang! You get three percent, right? It's so awesome. Plus your plus your you're running. Uh, hopefully you're running Warrior Paint, so you're just sitting there like healing. Oh my god, dude! So the push I mean, is real. <laughs> are you going chat but you got shattered ground here too which one well, are you so they're all good actually all three are good depending on who you're playing if mouse on the other team hurricane's actually a good pick as crazy as that sounds um shattered ground is actually good it, it um it, it comes down to what you're doing and what you want to accomplish uh battle rage i was playing with just to that, that was my experiment that game on uh, dragonshire i wanted to see how well it worked it's crazy strong um because we, like, I was soaking the damage and using Battle Rage to heal, my spin to heal, and War Paint to heal, right? So I was, like, I was mostly sitting around 65%. Um, and then the Mercs were just sitting there, like, tearing things up because I was soaking the damage. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's crazy. I'd argue Battle Rage is a good talent even without the Merc damage boost. <laughs> Because the healing you get there, um, it's like almost a 30% heal that you can have in your back pocket. It, it is, but again, it depends on... So, I never got it to work bang, bang, bang. It was like, there's a, a, a short cooldown. I think it's, it's like it's five like, seconds or something. Yeah, it, it's really short. So, it's not... You can't use it as a 30% heal. It's a 10% weight, a 10% weight, a 10% weight. Um, it's not bad, so it's definitely useful. And I used it. But shattered ground works well if you're gonna if you're um, looking to do the spread damage outside. Like battle rage is still really only good for a lane pushing. So uh, when I tested out shattered ground, I was I was literally just like, "This is Sonya's version of Greymane's cocktail." <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, hundred percent, it is. It's crazy how strong it is now. Um, and I think shattered ground ends up being the go-to there, but. There is a case to be made for both of the other talents. I think what's interesting overall about what they've done to her is almost all of her talents are useful. And that's what Blizzard likes to hear yeah. <laughs> when people say that kind the, of thing. This next one pissed me off, though. All right, level 7. Poison Spear. Spear does an additional 100% damage over 6 seconds. That's been nerfed time and time again, but it hasn't been touched this time. Uh, Life Funnel increases spins healing. Nothing changed there. And Shot of Fury. Activate to get 50 Fury on a 40 second cooldown. You also get a passive. After casting Slam, your next basic attack deals 40% more damage. And this is where we're talking about the synergy with War Paint here. So, I mean, I can see the the Shattered Ground Shot of Fury being a pretty yeah. big output to damage as well as survivability uh, if you use that combo along with War Paint as well. It is. Oh, 100% it is. Um, 
Yes, you are correct. Then if you take uh, Wrath of the Berserker at 10 to increase your damage further, you're getting even more healing well, off your war paint as well as other sources. You should be doing Wrath anyway. Unless something weird is happening, you should be doing Wrath. Oh, but here's on. my problem. If you got Chen on your team, you want to do the, <laughs> the dishwasher, whatever you call it. No, the, 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 what's it called? The dry machine? No, no. It's washing the machine. Uh, washing machine. Yeah. I, I knew I'd so, get there eventually. <laughs> so you skipped over my problem, though. Okay. And here, Tell here's, me about your here's, problem. My, here's my problem. My problem is... In 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 Blizzard's like desire to I don't know what the hell they put life funnel on seven with poison spear. That makes me sad. I liked having both of those in my build. Thirteen would come around and I was nigh unstoppable, Daz. Nigh unstoppable. I didn't even think about that there, but yeah, I mean now I have to choose. I don't like choosing. There's a lot of choice at seven here too. Do you want right. that poison spear damage, life funnel healing for a lot of melees, or do you want that shot of fury, which actually has a lot of value potentially as well if you're um, auto attacky? So, so shot of fury is actually useful, but I don't like it personally. It 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 doesn't feel like the way I want to play Sonya, um, for lack of a better word, or, or a better way to describe that. So, I, I definitely like poison spear or life funnel. Uh, the problem is like poison spear is really good, even though they nerfed the hell out of it. And Life Funnel is kind of good. And Shot of Fury is kind of good, too. And, yeah. No, I don't play a lot of Sonya, so I'm not saying Shot of Fury is great. But one of the nice things about this talent is that it lines up with your natural progression yes. of how you auto-attack, yeah. slam, auto-attack, slam. If you're going to be doing that anyways, you don't have to modify the way right. you're playing to get the value right. out of it. And I hate when you have talents or quests that make you do that. No, no, I agree, and I, I shouldn't have said it that way. You know what I don't like about it? Um, I find that I don't really need the 50 Fury. Yeah, I almost say like I'm, it's not for the 50 Fury necessarily, right? But No, it's for the other thing. Yeah. But the, the problem is, like, is it worth the, not getting Life Funnel or Poison Spear? And, like, I, I, I'm just not happy. I, ha I haven't found my go-to on 7, and I'm not happy that they moved Life Funnel <laughs> Am I the only one who needs the 50 Fury? <laughs> I never have a Fury problem, especially after Poison Spear. I'm always, like, capped on Fury. Always. Myst Mystic's just oh, way too furious. I'm always empty on Fury. I, I, like, go in full Fury, and then, like, I, I'm i out of Fury. My Q is down, and I'm just like, I need more damage. Are you are you weaving auto attacks in between each of your, your Qs and your, or your the, Ws? The real problem is he's missing his Qs. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Even if you even if you miss your Q, you're okay. The question is, are you weaving in auto attacks between your W's and your E's? You know who you're talking to here, right? Well, that's why I'm like confused <laughs> because it's Mystic, and I expect him to be weaving. But like, he, if you're weaving, you don't run out of Fury, he, so I'm confused. He's playing at such a high level that somehow he runs out of Fury, even though it seems physically <laughs> my, impossible. My, my W button is broken. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I jam the hell out of my W, don't get me wrong, but it's like W, auto, W, auto, E, auto, auto, W, auto, W, auto, E. Like, it, and it's not that identical exactly, but um, it's very similar to that, where you have to weave the... If you weave your autos in enough, you'll always have Fury. You'll always have Fury. Well, Mystic maybe she takes more At least that's from my kids. experience. <laughs> but yeah. I've played a ton of Sonya lately. Like a ton like Sonya's my go to. Like I love Diablo in ETC, but Sonya's my go to girl right now. So poor Valera. <laughs> and I and to the point where I was looking for a Funko Pop, but they don't make one that I've been able to find. <laughs> so uh, level thirteen, we've got mystical spear. Spear cooldown is reduced by three seconds and it always pulls even if you don't hit something. Ruthless. Extra spin damage to targets below 33% health. Doesn't increase your healing, though. And then no escape, 20% movement speed bonus on our trait. It used to be so 25, now, but baseline you get 10%, so doubles your, your movement speed bonus. Now I have to flip-flop on myself. <laughs> you're allowed because to. They were, you're because they you're were not nice. a politician. You can flip-flop as much as you want. <laughs> because they were nice and they moved Life Funnel to 7, now Mystical Spear is my go-to. But I'm still not happy with the fact that they moved Life Funnel to 7. But because they did that, I'm guaranteed to almost always pick Mystical Spear. Unless you're paired with, like, um, Malfeel, then Ruthless can get some extra um, value. Yeah, it seems, something like that. Seems like a weaker talent here for Sonya. I think this is one it of is. her lower spikes. That's why they should have left Life Funnel. <laughs> well, they can't just give her everything, Liquid. <laughs> we don't want to see a 60-70% win rate Sonya here. 
Oh, I mean, man. you're gonna get that anyway. Have you seen the range of these? Oh, it's yeah. sixteen. It's sixteen. Okay, so there's like a video making the rounds. It's sixteen with a Abathur hat, so you can solo the core, no problem. Yeah, you have to tell me how that happens in a second. <laughs> but first, I want to give the talent name of of the the build award to giant slammer because <laughs> i think that's a fantastic name <laughs> that's a great one isn't it yeah. i love that yeah. and and it's a good it's um it's a great way to replace giant killer yeah and you get what it does is you get two percent hero health bonus damage on your slams which can hit yeah. like a truck to begin with but adding an extra two percent hero health ignores armor as well uh, as just big chunks to big tanky heroes which are probably the ones in front of you uh, Rampage increases basic attack damage by 25%. Again, more attack damage on your basic attacks. Basic attacks also decrease the Ancient Spear cooldown by 0.75 seconds. The Nerves of Steel activate to, for a 25% shield for 3 seconds on a 60 second cooldown. We all know Nerves of Steel. So, like, how, how am I solo in the core Rampage. here, bud? Rampage. Well, with an Abathur hat plus Rampage. Gotcha. So, you need the increased attack speed. I'm assuming you took War Paint yeah. plus yeah, War auto attacky stuff. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there is there a bo- soloing boss potential here then too? If you're talking um, about soloing core, you're probably soloing bosses with ease, right? They're probably I haven't tried it yet. And I think you probably end up having to go um Battle Rage to get it. So it's probably like something along the lines twin, of twin uh, War Sonya? Paint. Yeah. War Paint, Battle Rage, um, Poison Spear, because Poison Spear, or no, I'm sorry, Shot of Fury, rather. Shot of Fury and Wrath of the Berserker, and then you'd have to go Ruthless instead of, uh, no, I'm sorry, I keep, I'm looking at the builder. So so who would win in a fight? Two Twin Blades Varian or Auto Attack Build Sonya? Oh, Sonya, 100%. 100%. You think so? So he's got to stun every got... like four. No, no, no. Because when Infinite you pick up um, rampage, when you pick up rampage, so he's got to stun every four seconds. You you don't think there's some sort of stalemate that you might meet here? Because very no, no, because... healing is quite impressive. It is, but with the stun, the stun throws off his. It no, totally, totally. Sonya wins that. If it was Mystic versus Mystic, which Mystic would win? Mystic. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Did uh did Sonya pick Wrath of the Berserker? I don't know why you asked Mystic. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Well then, yes, Sonya would probably win that actually. <laughs> All right, level twenty. We've got Crater. Uh, everyone knows about Crater. Uh, Striding Giant. This has actually changed a bit. Wrath of the Berserker increases max health by ten percent and grants Striding Giant, which is an act available that's only available while Wrath is active, and it grants Unstoppable for two seconds. It's on a thirty second cooldown, so you get a free Unstoppable. Uh, out of your wrath of the berserker basically That's pretty cool. That's uh, it's, pretty it's, cool. it's a neat little thing to have in there and plus it gives you extra 10 percent health so you don't feel like you have to use the unstoppable composite spear increases spear age by 50 percent and hitting hero grants 25 armor for so four seconds awesome that just that reaches so far that, that brings it to sonya wins level <laughs> look like right there that's why that's why varian loses right there yeah be careful because if you take that mystical spear and you don't connect you're not getting the armor <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but it's all right because yeah. that fifty percent range. Oh my God, the run! Can you imagine escaping? It's so. Oh my Can't God! Get away. Sorry, it's Tracer. You're awesome. no longer that mobile. Can't get away from Sonya. And then ignore pain. Activate for sixty hours for four seconds. Let's six second cooldown. So composite spear. So much fun, <laughs> dude. Oh my God. The the the. Okay. First of all, there's no way this makes it out of PTR this way. There's no like she is crazy OP. And that spear range when you take that talent is insane. It's level twenty though. Level it, twenty can have insane dude, talents. It's like um on uh I think Spider Queen is like one of the smaller maps, right? It's almost the entire length of the lane. Like like from four gate no. to four gate. It's no, almost not even close. <laughs> Go maybe it's maybe that's half the shortest the distance. one, right? Or is Brax is short? No, no. Whichever right, one was we'll the shortest some, one, I was we'll looking at the screenshot. Testing, yeah. It's literally almost the entire length between Fort Gate to Fort Gate. It's so long, dude. Oh my god, it's so long. I, I think a, I think Daz is right. It's I think it's about half the distance. It, <laughs> I, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, it's like there's no way. Did you read no the patch notes? It's fifty percent range, not 
three hundred percent range. Three hundred percent range. It was already long. It was already long. I'm like, telling you, it's way too Sonya long. Sonya kills herself because she uh, accidentally hooked all the way across the <laughs> all the way across the map. Just, it's further than it's a Genji dash. Way, it's way too long. I will tell you that in I usually end up taking ignore pain there or striding giant um, if they have a lot of CC. Like composite spear is really really good. But I tend to, because it's 16, I usually go um, Rampage or Giant Slammer. I want the survivability of Ignore Pain. But that's really because I've been, like, healerless when I've been playing on PTR because people don't like Anna's changes. So, um, <laughs> and because Anna can't heal when she is there, so Ignore Pain. But uh, on, on uh, pra it's practice, right? I think that's what it's called. When you go in the thing with Tri the Lich King, try mode. Thank you, try mode. Uh, I've I've played with composite spear, dude. It's really long. I'm like, it's okay. I might have over exaggerated a little, but it's really freaking long, dude. Like you're not escaping a Sonya that wants to kill you. Regardless, it's fun to play with it. If oh you hell want to, yes. If you want to take the fun one, you're taking composite spear. That's the one to take, man. Oh my god, it's so much fun, especially if you have uh, um, why well, my mystical spear. Dude, like, you're just chucking spears, like, all the time. If you have Mystical Spear, Rampage, and Composite Spear, you're, like, you can cross the map almost as fast as Junkrat can. You're beefy it's Genji. I, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. Well, Junkrat crosses the map faster than Genji does. <laughs> does he, though? I thought he Genji does. Depends on the talents you take for him. Though. Yeah, I was going to say, if Junkrat takes a talent, whenever he uses his... Uh... His mind, then it's it goes on like a one second cooldown. Oh, speaking of Junkrat, dude, your Junkrat play was amazing. You carried <laughs> the team when you were playing Junkrat that game. Wait, to find carry because I I seem to remember we lost that game. We did lose that game, but like <laughs> that game would have been minutes. over in half the time without you being there, man. Like you carried the team. First of all, Aram Aram is brutal, but second of all, like you carried the team on that Junkrat. It was amazing what you were doing. Like there were. You guys got some bad luck with the draws, so they're like both teams didn't have a lot of kill potential. But yeah, it was it was pretty good, dude. That was it was a lot longest, of fun to watch. Longest I saw their team. I was like, their their team was quite stacked. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I saw it anyway. I was like, hmm, it, it's uh, this is gonna be a hard one. <laughs> yeah, Ragnaros is pretty strong on that map too. I believe they got a Ragnaros, right? Yeah, Ragnaros, Lava Wave is like uh, just like yeah. takes over, right? Between Lava Wave and uh, Molten Core, like, what do you do at that point? Yeah, Cavalier Guest was actually, I think, saying they should have taken Smash, but I feel like Lava Wave is good for. I mean, it probably prolongs the game quite a bit because even yeah. if even if you get a big push, Lava Wave comes, it takes up all the minions in your only lane, so you've got to wait for like you know 30 40 seconds for those minions to that, that next or to spawn to truck all the way down to the other person's core so i i agree with him on the point he was trying to make smash would have guaranteed them more kills mm -hmm. obviously so kills but, versus the delay and, and the right. comeback mechanic i guess or... it right. got it got to the point where um i was trying to siege down their like front fort with my bombs just throwing them every so often and uh they, they were just body blocking my bombs because they didn't want it to hit their, <laughs> right, their fort right. i was like oh no well you it's have a valid to, strategy in right? like what are you gonna do you, that's the only thing you can do <laughs> yeah. so all right well maybe we should sign off here we don't have mystic shakedown until next week next week too we're actually probably i probably shouldn't promise this but we're gonna try a different format we're going to try a pardon the interruption style format for the Nexus Trolls, which I'm pretty excited to see how that works. Uh, we'll see how it goes for the first one. We're probably, we might, probably not going to make it like a, a consistent thing, but we're going to see how it goes and just have some fun with it. Uh, so keep posted for that for next week. But thanks to everyone for listening and watching. Thanks to Super Dave, our chieftain. Hail to the chief, Super Dave? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how to how to like actually properly thank Super for his patronage, for pledging his support on, uh, to the trolls. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the Nexus Trolls, the Heroes of the Storm podcast. We stream this live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash trolls, usually every week on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Liquid, our special guest for the week. Where can people find you? <laughs> special guest. Uh, you can follow me at liquidgg on Twitter. That's L-I-Q-I-U-D-G-G. Uh, also, if you applied for any jobs with Trolls.gg, I am reaching out to those people today. And how about you, Mister? Where people find you? 
You can find me at Mystic Shroud on Twitter and maybe in the Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you can find me at, at DazHot. Uh, again, thanks to all our Patreon supporters. If you're liking the show and you'd like to, a way to support us, you can do so over at patreon.com slash trollsgg. You can also subscribe to our show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you happen to find your podcast online. You can also visit our website at trolls.gg slash the nexus troll and watch this and past shows along with past video streams, which can also be found on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash trollsgg. For announcements about the show in general, here the storm news, you can follow us on Twitter at, at the nexus trolls. And if you want to hang out with us and the trolls community in game, you can slash join trollsgg in game or join our Discord channel. You can find the information at trolls.gg slash Discord for that. And then finally, if you need to touch with us, the best way is by email at the next trolls at trolls gg everybody thanks again for watching mystic liquid thanks for joining me as per usual yeah i not tip my hat to you wait there, wait wait i said as Just per usual guess, man <laughs> I know. We, we we like to jest but yeah liquid as per usual everybody have a great week <laughs>